Alright ladies and gentlemen, so welcome back now in round 4 of the Clan Milk $2500 Open. I'm Zayori from Zayori.tv bringing you yet another match live from the tournament. Here we do have one day facing off against Trademark Esports, switching it up a little bit from TT Esports. I do apologize as initially I thought this was TDM versus Clan Milk themselves, but indeed it is TDM versus One Day. So, drafting is underway. We can get into that momentarily here, but I do want to say One Day is a surprisingly solid team. I do believe they are from the Australian region, the Oceanic region. I don't know if they're New Zealand or Australian or what have you, but they are from that region. I do remember them from the DreamHong qualifiers, and they played absolutely very very well they I, they could go toe to toe with TT Esports they are definitely one of the top teams in the Australian region I know a lot of you are thinking oh, it doesn't really say much but they actually are quite good and I think this is going to be a slightly more even game that we have seen for TDM at least I'm excited because we're going to get to see their new roster here you'll imagine you'll uh, <laughs> notice on the Hellborn side of things. Trafflinor up in the drafting position. Moon Meander still there in that uh, second seat, but Haxtrin and uh, Franzi actually going to be joining uh, the Moon Meander, Trafflinor, and B-Kid trio. So, of course, uh, Z-Freak and Sender, I guess, no longer part of TTM. I know Sender isn't. I don't know about Z-Freak in particular. I don't know if he's a sub, um, but Haxtrin tagged up here, now part of TDM. And, of course, friends, Franzi is uh, Peter Pan Dam, for those of you that don't know. I'll probably call him Peter throughout this game, uh, but, indeed, that is Peter Pan Dam. Ah, so, let's go ahead and take a look at the bands here. The blind bands come out. Legion side going to go with Pebbles, Maraxis. Hellborn side going to go Tundra Silhouette. Uh, the locks coming out. One day going to have that first lock. Going to go in favor of Eluna, Glacius, Torture, Polywog, Priest, Bubbles, and Ophelia. So, no throw picks here in the locking phase. It looks like all very powerful heroes. So, going to have a lot of options uh, as these picks unfold. A lot of support. All intellect heroes in here as well, which is quite interesting. I think the first time I've ever seen all intellect heroes stuck in the locking phase so that's uh, kind of interesting as well just interesting trend to observe uh one day gonna go ahead and start off the banning phases we're gonna start things off with armadon followed up by nymphora cthulhu font zephyr tempest and jeraziah so yet again the band's looking uh, fairly straightforward a couple of scary heroes still on the board as always uh, but those uh, scary junglers are going to get banned. I have a feeling one day is going to first pick Ophelia coming out uh, of this uh, this open picking phase here once we get into the lock picking. Um, you know, the, one of the things about lock picking that's really important to note is this pick right here. Whoever has that first pick, first ban starts things off, they get the first pick in the locking phase as well. So that's going to be your golden tick up, ticket to pick up that one really, really powerful hero out of the locking phase that, or out of that locked pool that you really, really want. I have a feeling that they're going to be mixing in an Ophelia. It seems a little bit strange. Well, who actually locked the Ophelia? I guess uh, TDM locked Ophelia, so perhaps not. Um, she's she's going to be either first picked here or picked up on this. <laughs> Side, I would guess. Anyhow, for second archer, going to be the first pick here for one day. Not a bad way to start off the uh, the picks or the the open picks. I, I don't know the terminology for lock picking. I, I'm struggling with some of the terminology uh, as far as uh, what is it? is this the open picks, the what, the non blind picks, the the non blind bands. I don't I don't know what the proper word to insert is. Um, right there. We're going to see Behemoth Witchslayer first picked here by uh, TDM, which is a little bit interesting. In that last match, I actually commented on um, the, the the one team going Witchslayer in that first round of picks as well. So, you know, well, why Witchslayer there? There's a lot of other heroes that could have mixed in. Um, but apparently TDM trying to run a little bit of Witchslayer action as well. Of course, with Glacius locked, maybe assuming that uh, he's going to be first picked by one day down there as well. Um, or Aluna. So, uh, regardless, TDM is going to have the option to pick up a really, really strong support uh, from that lock pool there, whether it's a Luna or Glacius or even Ophelia, um, they're going to be able to get one or even maybe two of those heroes. Of course, two interesting picks here from one day. Magma's not quite so interesting, but we're actually going to get to see a Malakin. So this is going to be interesting. We've seen Malakin a few times in the past, and he is a really, really interesting hero. He's one that definitely does have some viability. He can carry very, very hard, but is he going to be able to carry as hard as Dark Lady? And that's a question that... Uh, I feel fairly confident answering with a big resounding no. I don't think Dark Lady is going to be out carried by this Malakin. But we'll see. Of course, there are going to be a lot of other factors coming into play. And we'll see how things fare. Of course, the locking phase has begun, or lock picking phase has begun. So we'll see what one day does with that first pick. Uh, and it all depends if they have a confident Ophelia player. I don't know them that well. I would I would have guessed in most cases Ophelia would have been the first pick there. But if you don't have that really good, strong micro player... Um, 
sorry about that. Um, you know, I, I can see why you wouldn't pick it up. Bubble's going to be grabbed for TDM here, and Glacia is going to be that last pick, so not too surprised. We'll see what they do here. Polywog Priest or Torturer, uh, both going to be very viable picks. Certainly could uh, grab Ophelia as well. All three of them uh, would fit in pretty nicely. It is going to be Torturer. A little bit surprised to see Torturer over Polywog Priest, though, looking at the laning setup. Um, actually, how, how are they going to lane this? Looks like it's going to be Forsaken Archer Magmus. Probably a Malak and a Luna, so that would leave a solo Torturer. I probably would have uh, preferred the solo Polywog Priest, especially against a Dark Lady. Get a little bit of pushing power, get a little bit of crowd control going on. Just me, but um, an interesting pick. Nonetheless, Torture are going to be quite good. Let's get it on. Alright, so there we go, there we go indeed, loaded into uh, one of the last games of the day, if this isn't the last game, this is probably going to be the second to last, going to remember to switch the overlays, there we go. Here we are indeed. So anyway, getting into this game here, we'll see how TDM sets up their lanes. Looks like they could be interested in a tri-lane here. Peter Pan Dan going to be playing that. Glacius, Hacks Ring going to be the one to play the hard carry Dark Lady. And uh, B-Kid going to be on Behemoth. So it looks like they are going to gear up at least start as a tri-lane. In the mid, it is going to be Solo Witch Slayer in the hands of Moon Meander. And that should be a treat for us to watch as well. I've talked about Solo Mid Witch Slayer a little bit. And it's actually pretty cool. I love seeing aggressive Witch Slayers. I, I, I don't really like Witch Slayer in the support role. He plays it nicely because he has, uh, you know, some great crowd control abilities, has some nice burst damage, but I really like seeing the solo Witch Slayer, kind of like, a, kind of like um, how I like seeing a solo Demented Shaman. I think they're both heroes that can kind of flourish in that lane a little bit and um, really do a lot of positive stuff if they get that early farm. Does leave us to the bottom lane here is going to be the Malakin Luna lane that I was talking about going up against the solo Bubbles in the hands of Trothmador here. So, pretty solid lanes from the Hellborn side, of course. We'll see how that tri-lane fares uh, with Dark Lady. They're going to be going up against this Forsaken Archer Magmus lane, and this should be really good for TDM. I think this is almost what they're hoping for. Of course, Forsaken Archer, one of their carries, is going to be able to shut this Dane lane down very effectively with the tri-lane. Of course, they're going to want to shut down Malakin as well, but uh, I think it'll be a little easier to shut down that Forsaken Archer earlier on. The thing about Malakin, sort of like Pestilence, although uh, Malakin does have some much better farming tools, one of the things about him is that he's not particularly strong till he gets those core items. He really needs that Whispering Helm and also really kind of needs a Shrunken Head. Once he gets that Shrunken Head, though, he can play that Initiator role very, very effectively, and that ultimate is so powerful. It seems a lot of people underestimate Malakin's ultimate. One of the things that uh, gets ignored a lot is, yeah, the fear is cool, but he gets a huge armor buff for that first five seconds, and that's what allows him to really be a strong Initiator, move in, um, and hop right into the battle. Up in the top lane here, we are going to see the tri-lane commence, and it looks like the Legion team is already going to do uh, a little bit of an adjustment in their lanes and do kind of a tri-lane on tri-lane. We talked about that in a couple previous matches that have started out in a similar fashion, the different responses that you can take to a tri-lane, and this is one of them. Just form a tri-lane on your own and go toe-to-toe -to -toe and try to get the better of the farm, and uh, it can work very nicely. The problem is you just have to have a comp that is open to that kind of a situation. One Day does have one such comp, a Luna, Magmus, and Forsaken Archer, a triple stun lane a lot of burst damage as well so certainly well suited for uh, this sort of a killer tri-lane type scenario at the very least to try and keep dark lady under farmed unfortunately that fissure block not going to catch a luna on the proper side so luna will be able to survive no problem noble effort from b kid we're unfortunately just not going to line it up quite right let's take a look at the farm here and see who's getting the better of it Looks like Forsaken Archer sitting 3-1, while Dark Lady 4-3, so still relatively even. There's some actually uh, action in the mid lane here as Moon Meander uh, manning up a little bit onto this Torture, almost picking up the kill, but at the very least uh, kind of dominating this mid lane here, and it looks like he's going to be able to pick up a lot better of the farm. TDM's really looking in good shape, just glancing at the preliminary report here on um, the GPM meter. 
Of course, one thing about Dark Lady that makes her very powerful in this situation, as we can see here, is the Taint Soul. And this is something that we bring up from time to time, because it's so important to reiterate. She's so great in a scenario like this, because Haxorin can actually just sit back from a very safe distance and farm creeps with that Taint Soul. It has an unbelievably long range of 800 at level 1, and does enough damage that you can use it to last hit creeps. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it, other than deny, of course, you can deny those creeps. But there's nothing you can do to stop Dark Lady from using that Taint Soul as a farming tool. Um... Oh god, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. It's kind of ironic. The, the, the guy. Uh, 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 slash ignore a karma sucks. Sorry. There we go. Okie dokie. So um, yeah, still no kill. Uh, Bloodlust coming out. Sorry, I lost my train of thought now that I uh, had to had had to do that. Oh. Um, oh, Magnus, Magnus almost getting taken out here, but it's three minutes in, still no kill uh, coming out on either side, no bloodlust, and yeah, the, the GPM chart continuing to grow and evolve here, blossoming into something that is, uh, well, not so good for our Legion team, I suppose. We're taking Archer, unfortunately, just not really coming out ahead in this uh, tr makeshift tri lane that the Legion team is going for, uh, really kind of unfortunate for Forsaken Archer. Do see some damage exchange in the mid lane here as Moon Meander goes toe to toe with I can't read it because it's purple Carnivalis. Is that how you say that name? Carnivales. Yes, that's absolutely right. Um, so kind of um, yep. Yeah, Torture really having a, a rough time against Moon Meander on that um, Witch Slayer. Like I said, it's pretty interesting to see aggressive Witch Slayer play, especially once he hits level six. That's when this mid lane is going to get interesting. It's all about that level six timing. As always with mid lane, uh, rune control is important as well as torture heads to the top. Is torture going to be able to fish his wish? He indeed will not. Going to be an illusion rune down in the bottom, and uh, we'll see what, uh, what becomes of that uh, illusion rune down in the bottom. Just going to keep the GPM chart open for now as I find it a little bit more interesting than some of the other stats. As Forsaken Archer continuing to grow, you're actually kind of going toe to toe with Haxorin. The difference is in these other lanes, though. Bubbles is completely dominating on this close lane Malakin and Witch Slayer, uh, pretty much dominating on Torture as well. So, if anything, the tri lanes are kind of break even. The big difference in, these game, in this game are the other two lanes. The solo lanes just not going so well for one day. And this is where, you know, you start to think, okay, this tri lane isn't working that well. Maybe this uh, Magnus, maybe this Illumina or maybe even both of them need to start moving around the map. Uh, you know, if they could set up a kill in mid with Torture to pick off Moon Meander or get Torture a little bit of momentum in this mid lane, that could be huge. And it's not like they're having a huge presence here in the top, uh, especially since they're pushing back to the tower. This is like golden opportunity for this Aluna Magmus to start moving around uh, while Forsaken Archer has a, a few seconds at least, maybe half a minute or so, of decent lane control. They just don't need to be here. They could be a little bit more sneaky about it. Just making me a little bit nervous. It's not too often we see TDM pick up some early momentum as they are now uh, and then kind of let it go as the game continues. We could see Behemoth in a little bit of trouble. Magmus right at that point where he could land a match max range stun and maybe make it happen, but not going to go for it. Not going to man up. Peter Pan Dam going to come in there and throw down the Tundra Blast, and that'll be enough to uh, prevent the kill from coming out. So uh, kind of potential for one day to pick up a Bloodlust kill there, but unfortunately not going to capitalize. Witch Slayer now picking up the bottle as well as his Striders. Torture does have a bottle, but no boots. So I think it's safe to say Torture has lost rune control at this point. Not much he's going to be able to do to make it to these runes uh, to keep up with the speed of Witch Slayer. Moon hiding around here looking for an opportunity to pick up that top rune. Also maybe pick up a kill, but uh, not going to find one, at least not quite yet. Down at the bottom, Bubbles trying to get a bit more aggressive. Looks like a Luna going to port down and try and help out this Malakin who is still struggling so much. Just looking at the raw creep scores, 9-0 and 0, as far as Malakin is concerned, 24-20. and 20 from Bubbles. He is denying so heavy in this lane, and that is certainly why Malakin is struggling so much. Bubbles is going to take a little bit of damage here, but of course he's going to have all those cooldowns, and he is going to be just fine. Actually going to come back for a little bit of return damage here. Going to take the Shell Surf in, trying to line up that Song of the Sea. A nice cancel cast from Aluna, and Bubbles is going to have to be very careful here. I'm a little surprised he didn't just man up uh, right away after that uh, Shell Surf and Song of the Sea nuke. Uh, to try and pick up the kill, but uh, instead he did man down a little bit. Which are going to pick up an invisibility rune, though, and it looks like we could see a bloodlust kill down in the bottom lane if we don't see it in the top first. Magmus looking like he may fall. Nice auto attack disjoint with the steam bath. Is it going to be enough to turn around here on the Dark Lady? It is not. Peter Pan Dam going to be the one to pick up the bloodlust kill here as he does finish off support, and it looks like uh, Dark Lady is going to fall to the wrath of that Forsaken Archer, but at what cost will Forsaken Archer go down? Behemoth does have a Fissure Sun, but B Kid not going to throw it. All the while in the bottom lane, we did see an exchange come about as uh, it looks like Aluna was killed. Uh, 
Witch Slayer helping out quite a bit. But Trapanor on Bubbles, the one to pick up the kill. Witch Slayer still has his ultimate, still yet to go uh, pick up a kill. Rummaging about the map, but TDM now up 2-1 to one as far as hero kills are concerned. Unfortunately, Haxorn did get taken out. That is going to slow down his farm quite a bit. Uh, as for Sacred Archer, did pick up a kill. Really nobody taking off in this game, to be honest. Seeing uh, nobody above that 260 GPM mark or so is uh, well, just a little bit surprising, seeing as we do have a couple of hard carries here. But both teams doing a pretty effective job denying the lanes. Sorry about that. Did mute, uh, mute myself to blow the nose for a second there. So, yeah, still a quiet game. Three kills in about eight minutes. Could actually see some action here in the mid lane, though. Moon Meander is going to man up a little bit. Glacius going to come in. Moon's still not even going to need to use that ultimate. Just going to finish him off with auto attack. So, uh, Witch Slayer is still having a very promising game, sitting about 300 GPM as uh, himself as well as Glacius is going to roam to the top. Moon going to be able to pick up a Haste Rune, but it doesn't even matter. They don't need the mighty Moon Meander to finish off Roasted Mango. As he goes down, Magmus uh, looking like he's going to fall. Oh, the graveyard stun not going to connect. That is so unfortunate. Moon getting a little bit overzealous there, perhaps. Magmus should not be able to survive this. He is not. There we go. The finish stun going to come out. Plenty of damage to finish off Mr. Support there on the Magmus. And it looks like now TDM may opt to uh, push this Tier 1 tower into top lane. Moon Meander going to use that haste rune to his advantage, move over, buy a, hel a mana potion, and then head back to the mid lane. The great thing about picking up those haste runes, they change the economics of trying to gank at this stage in the game. Sort of lowering that oppor opportunity cost, lowering the risk of, well, what if we don't get a kill? At least you can run back to the lane nice and quick. So that is good news for Witch Slayer here. He's just head back to the mid. Does take a little bit of damage from Torture, but will sip up the bottle and continue doing what Witch Slayer does best. Windmander still yet to use that ultimate, just waiting for that golden opportunity to use the silver bullet. <laughs> um, but we shall see. TDM now up 5-1 to one in great shape. Malakin struggling a bit down here in the bottom lane, struggling so much that he's actually picked up two sets of marchers. I'm a bit dumbfounded. I don't know if we just hit the wrong hotkey there and didn't sell it back in time. I don't know if we're just trying to save him for a rainy day. Two boots for each foot. I I don't know. Um, so Malakin is picking up some free farm in the bottom, but um, I, I feel like we need to subtract some from that GPM because he has two sets of boots. I don't know what to make of it. I'm in the top lane though. More kills coming out. See Trapmonder actually picking up a double tap as both Aluna and Forsaken Archer fall. Magma's going to be able to survive for now, but this top lane is just getting completely obliterated. It's not even a tri lane anymore, just a quad lane, letting the other lanes free farm as they dominate up here in the top. Still don't know what to make of the double boots. Uh, I really completely don't find it. He's going to go ahead and sell one of those uh, pairs of boots back. Uh, had to be a misclick. I think he had it in the inventory longer than the allotted time where you can sell stuff back to get a full refund. So some uh, lost gold there for Malakin, no doubt. A little bit scary to see him leading the way for the Legion side. Seeing around 230 GPM, definitely not where he wants to be. The fact that TDM is ahead by this significant of a margin and this early on, given that they have a Dark Lady, just makes me think, yeah, things looking a little bit grim. 8 to 1 already. So, Witch Slayer down in the bottom lane. Moon Meander actually going to miss the graveyard stun again and might get turned around on here. Uh, and he is going to blow the ultimate onto Malkin. Is he going to have enough damage? Moon going to go toe to toe, but Malkin going to hop back out and use the ultimate. Whoa, what was Moon Meander thinking right there? So unfortunate. I know Moon is very tired as he did stay up casting Garena all night. I actually casted with him a little bit last night. So, I would imagine there is some exhaustion as he uh, should have landed that graveyard stun. That was one of those, yeah, probably should have hit that one. Uh, very un, uh, very unfortunate. Unfortunate indeed. Big, big boo-boos. That's good news for uh, the Malakin down there, though. Now it's 250 GPM, continuing his way in a positive direction. And Moon actually dying there is going to lower his gold farm down to about 250 GPM as well. Bubbles actually leading the way as Trapladore is having a hell of a game, sitting 5-0-1. Oh, Trapladore showing us what Bubbles is all about. Tier 1 tower in the mid lane is going to get taken out. No deny going to come. One day is going to be able to finish it off. And it's actually going to be torture to pick up the last hit. Certainly good news as well. But, you know, almost hoping for a little bit more action in this game. It's not terribly slow. It has picked up a little bit. 10 kills in 12 minutes. But um, 
seems the most of the games that we've seen today have been pretty farm intensive. Just relatively speaking, we haven't really had one game that's just been that super like hardcore aggressive, maybe too aggressive, action packed, just more kills than we can keep up with. Sometimes that's a, a nice little change of pace. Again, there are plenty of other streams to enjoy as well. I know Honcast is doing some coverage as well as a plethora of a different uh, first person first person streams. You can check those out on Zayori.tv. The calendar on the right side does have most of them cataloged. You can mouse over, see the viewer count, and of course there are some nice embedded um, links as well. So by all means, check that out if you want to see who else is streaming. Um, certainly uh, you can do that. Down here in the bottom lane though, Trablador going to find himself in a bit of a sticky situation. He's going to throw a rel reasonably nice ultimate here. Does have the Shell Surf up. Going to buy himself just enough time to escape. Beautifully done by the artistic Trapandor. He is going to get caught by that, uh, the tail end of that sword throw, and the tower just not going to do enough damage to finish off Mr. Malakin. So although beautifully executed by Trapandor, he is going to go down. That is going to be his first death of the game and uh, end that legendary streak. So sort of an unfortunate ending to uh, what was a series of pretty good plays. Let's get the GPM chart again, though. Haxorin has now been left to his own devices, a dangerous thing to do regardless of what hero he's playing. Now sitting about 280 GPM. He is in really, really good shape. And uh, yeah, I think this Legion team, I don't know if they're leaving him alone on purpose or this was just sort of reactionary to something else, but they need to be very careful. If they're going to leave Dark Lady alone to free farm, they need to have an ulterior plan. That means they need to group up, put some pressure on some of these remaining tier 1 towers, or they need to have somebody in that lane preventing him from just free farming his way to victory. Because we've seen time and time again what happens when Dark Lady goes unchecked. Which are going to come in here, Torture going to fall, Moon Meander ain't messing around, going to just throw out the Silver Bullet, pick up an easy kill, our De Carnivales. Down here in the bottom lane, looks like Bubble's actually going to be able to pick up a kill onto support. So two kills coming out for TDM kind of across the map. And they may even be able to push this tier 1 tower in the mid lane. It is just about to fall into deny range. And uh, I think they will be able to pressure it down. In the bottom, more action continuing here as well as Bubbles and Malakin go toe to toe. Malakin does have that ultimate off. So uh, tr uh, Trapador does need to be kind of careful here. He does have a kelp field up himself. So perhaps he will be just fine. Tier 1 tower in the mid lane now is well within deny range. And it is going to be a battle for the last hit. It is going to go in favor of the help one side. Moon Meander actually going to pick it up. He does have a haste rune activated. He needs to be very careful here, though. Doesn't want to overcommit. Moonmander also with a portal key is in a position to be very, very aggressive at this point in the game. Down in the bottom lane, almost missing a kill onto that Malakin. He did almost die, unfortunately. Um, Tropmador just didn't have quite enough damage to finish him off. And it looks like they are going to come down and try and find him. Unfortunately, Behemoth not going to stumble upon uh, the dangerously low Malakin. So not going to be able to find that Fissure Snipe kill that he's looking for. TDM still in a great position, though. We are now at that 15-minute mark. Three... 3 to 10. Of course, TDM way, way ahead. Dark Lady still just free farming away, though. Haxorin has been completely unchecked up in this top lane for a couple of minutes now, and uh, that just continues to make me nervous. In the mid, we see some more action coming. Witchler going to be able to secure a kill on a Forsaken Archer, it looks like. One more auto attack ought to do it. Down he goes in the jungle. Carnivale is actually going to be able to pick up a kill on to Peter Pan Dam, playing that Glacius. So it is going to be a one for one exchange, but of course, Glacius for Forsaken Archer. TDM will take that any day of the week. Let's take a look at the XP per minute chart just to see where we're at. Witch Slayer leading the way. No big surprise there as he was the solo mid hero. And uh, Trout in great uh, in a great position down in the bottom lane as well. Hero damage done just for kicks and giggles. Oh my god. I don't know that I have seen a hero damage chart staggered this much at the 15 minute mark in quite some time. This Bubbles is doing some pretty serious work. Um, wow. 31% of the hero damage done across the 10 heroes. That is insane. I mean, that is just like a ridiculous margin. Now, you're only 16 minutes in, so it can be staggered, but I mean, Trapanor is having a hell of a game. 6 1 and 1. He is in uh, really great shape. B Kid, though, definitely struggling a bit. Oh, oh, never mind. I misread that. I thought that said 0 oh, 6 and 0. Oh. The dyslexia just keeps getting worse. Nice take cover there from Bubbles is going to mitigate the volley, although Moon Meander is right in the mix. He's going to take the heat for a little while, but that'll be enough to skew the kill under Roasted Mango. Malakin going to be in some trouble. He's going to fall. Troutmandor going to be able to finish him off uh, with that shell serve. Unfortunately, Aluna going to wander right into the mix. BK going to drop a nice fissure stun, but that'll be enough to secure the kill. Troutmandor going to be able to pick up the kill, making it a double tap. Magmus with a Lava Surge going to go straight into the rest of the team. He 
he's going to fall. Moon Meander going to finish him off, and he's going to become a serial killer as well. So a four for nil exchange in favor of Trademark Esports. The domination streak just continues. B Kid now 0 0 and 7. His farm is starting to look pretty good. 16 minutes in, well on his way to that portal key, just about two thirds of the way there. He is going to be in good shape here in just about 5 10 minutes or so. We do see Bubbles now picking up his portal key, as Witch Slayer has also had his. So the portal key patrol is in full effect here. The Hellborn side getting that initiation power that they need. This much gold difference here. We're getting to that point where the inventories are just so vastly different. The snowball effect is upon us. Tier 1 tower down here in the bottom lane is going to be safe for now. Malkin going to port in as a TDM does back up. Not going to overcommit to this tower kill. And they're going to head for the hills here. No problem there. Sort of a nice defense from uh, this Legion side, but again, I hate to sound like a broken record, but Dark It Lady just farming, 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 farming. GPM chart, Dark Lady now tied for first with this Bubbles, who has just been out of the lane nonstop. Dark Lady going to be able to pick up a tower kill now here in the top lane. Next, we're going to let the creeps get that last hit, but still furthering his gold farm that much more. Looking at the GPM chart, further evidence uh, into how much of a hole one day has dug for themselves. Dark Lady, though, I just I don't understand the logic of leaving Dark Lady behind. Although, at least this time, they do have Dark Lady by herself. They are going to group up and pressure this tower. So I did say that is one of the things you need to do. If you're going to let Dark Lady farm, at least group up and make something happen. Beautiful initiation from Bubbles, though. Beacon going to be able to snipe a kill as the onslaught continues. Torture going to take a lot of damage here as Behemoth comes in with an ultimate. Torture going to fall. Silver Bullet going to come out, and it's going to be pretty much a clean sweep. A four for nil exchange. Malkin going to be able to survive, but he's going to port into the jungle. GG, well played come out however and it looks like that is going to be the end of it i don't know if it's going to pass they may let malakin die here before they actually pass it he is going to go down moon meander going to become legendary and then the concede vote is going to pass a little bit of a legion trolling there but the gg well plays come out so an 18 minute win here for tdm looking very good in the fourth round i believe they are now going to be around i'm um, now um, oh my god advancing to the round of eight so very very nicely done like i said one day they are a very solid team unfortunately not the best game to display their skills uh tdm though i have to say they are looking damn good we can't forget haxorin as well as peter pandam new additions to the team and uh they're looking better than ever tdm is in great shape they are definitely a force to be reckoned with to be frank i wouldn't be surprised if this ended up being a tdm versus tte sports finals absolutely within the realm of reason both these teams looking very very good so once again i'm zayori from zayori.tv of course follow the social networking facebook and twitter.com slash zayori tv youtube.com slash zayori tv one thank you so much for enjoying